Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will continue practicing routes. This lesson will be dedicated to public static default folders and public static custom folders in ASP Netcore 7. When we executed our last lesson's code, we obtained a file named month.json, which was updated with the data from the URL path. This logic to create such a file was included in the code, and we have no external access to this file. However, let's imagine a scenario where this file needs to be accessed by any user. To facilitate public access to files, Netcore 7 offers a dedicated static folder. To access static files, a publicly served folder is required. In Netcore 7, this folder name www root. Any file located in this directory becomes accessible from any location. In the My App solution, I will establish the www root folder. Notably, Netcore 7 supplies a default icon for this public folder. Let's relocate the file created after the endpoint was invoked to this newly established folder. Attempting to access this file from the root URL will activate the run method. However, simply creating a static files folder and placing a file within it is insufficient. Activation requires enabling this folder within the application. To achieve this, we need to incorporate a method called useStaticFiles into the application. By integrating this middleware method into the app, attempting to access the root URL with the static file name will result in the display of the file's contents. Naturally, the file's content will be presented only if a file exists within the static folder. Otherwise, encountering a 404 error or triggering the run method would be inevitable. Presently, the current code logic eliminates the display of a 404 error as the run method is the final instance of the middleware. The static root folder is a conventional static content folder in ASP Notker 7 applications. Pros of the folder, it is intended to hold publicly accessible static files, such as client-side resources like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, logos, favorite icons, graphics, fonts, and so on. This root folder is also the default location for storing static files that are served by the built-in web server. When we publish or deploy an application, the contents of the static root folder are exposed and made available to the clients via HTTP request. This allows the client-side resources to be accessible directly, as opposed to going through server-side processing for every request. So public files become easy and straightforward to set up for serving static content. You can simply drop static files into the root folder and they will be accessible to your application. It is scalable. You can easily add more static files to the root folder without affecting the performance of your application. It will be cached, which includes efficient delivery of static resources to clients. Also, it conforms to the convention used by many web servers, making deployment easier. And it is secure since the folder is protected by the web server. And cons. Limited control over requested handling as static files are typically stored directly by the web server, bypassing application logic. All files are located in the fixed location, and it can be difficult to customize to your specific needs. May not be suitable for handling complex authorization rules for static resources. Can clutter the project structure if all static files are placed directly in static root folder without proper organization, hence it will be difficult to manage the folder. And sure thing, if you have a large number of static files, it can be difficult to keep track of them all. While it's technically possible to store large files or large quantities of data in the root static folder, it's generally not recommended as it can increase the load on the web server and affect the application's performance. Large files, media content, or user uploads should typically be stored in a separate location, such as cloud-based storage, service, or dedicated file server. Now about custom public static folder, Overall, the WW root folder is a good choice for storing static files in Netcore 7. However, if you have a large number of static files or if you need to customize the location of your static files and resources using a custom public static folder, can provide better structure and maintainability. This allows you to manage your static files in a more organized manner and keep separate from other project files. Here are some of the pros and cons of using a custom public static folder. You can customize the location of your static folder. You can have more control over the security of your static files. You can have more control over the performance of your application. Cons? It can be more difficult to manage, deploy, and troubleshoot. 
Ultimately, the decision of whether or not to use a custom public static folder is a trade-off between flexibility and complexity. If you need the flexibility of a custom public static folder, then it is worth the extra complexity. However, if you do not need the flexibility, then you can use the default www root folder. Again, both approaches are valid. You are the creator, choose the one that best fits your projects. So now let's see how to create a custom static folder or folders. You can pick any name you want for a custom static folder. However, just creating the folder is not enough. If you create a folder inside your application's main folder, it won't be reachable by the public. You have to tell the application that this folder is meant to be custom static folder. When it comes to naming, it's a good idea to choose a descriptive name. I'm going to name it public static folder. Next, you need to include some settings for the builder and give it a new web root path using name public static folder. To make sure both folders work, I'll copy the JSON file from the default static folder to the new one, giving them a different names. As you can see, both files are accessible. Now let's remove the file from the default folder and try accessing it from the custom static folder. We gain access to the file in the custom static folder, while for the default static folder, the run method gets triggered due to the missing file. It's worth mentioning that in Netcore 7 can be issues if only the custom static folder exists and the default one, www root, is absent. Both folders should be present in the app. Although the default one can be empty, Netcore 7 will first check the default folder, and if the requested file is not there, it will then look into the custom folder. In cases where you need multiple custom folders, Netcore 7 gives us this opportunity too. This allows you to organize different types of files into separate folders. And yes, it's perfectly fine to use multiple public static folders in ASP.NET Core 7. This can be helpful if you wish to split your static files across different hosting locations, or if you want extra control over the security of these files. To set up multiple public static folders, you have to adjust the static file options object in your startup class. This object lets you define where your static files are placed and how they are managed. I'm going to set up this extra static folder using the builder declaration. Then I'll move the file into this newly defined static folder. If I use Chrome and try to open the file, I should see its content. You can notice that the file is accessible. This means you can put various types of files in this folder or any other public static folders, like images, binary files, text files, or anything else. All these files will be available for public access. So we have these three static folders connected and open for access. The initial folder that will be looked into when a file is requested is the default folder named www root. If the file is found there, it will be served, and the other folders will be skipped. If the file isn't in the default folder, the other folders will be checked one by one. And as always, lesson assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson, I highly encourage you to complete the assignments, as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. By consistently practicing, you will see faster results in your learning journey. And the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!